Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. So if you own a cool Vespa scooter, you know where to find parts and accessories. ScooterWest.com, check us out on the web. Um, if you're looking for how-to videos, you found the right place, Vespa Motorsport. Search us on YouTube and subscribe and you'll find lots of cool videos, mostly about modern Vespas and many about classic Vespas. Uh, here I got my Vespa Primavera 50. This is a 2020 model with the iJet fuel injected 50cc motor. Uh, it's May 2020 and if anybody knows what's going on, I don't know, throughout the world, uh, there's a little bit of this like social isolation thing. Just be by yourself, enjoy yourself, uh, just be out in the open by yourself or stay home, whatever they want to say. You know what? Just don't hang around with people. So, I don't know, I just like, you know what, I've been trying to keep my head above everything and I just haven't gone on like a good ride, I like ride around town, so like, I really want to clear my mind and I was like, I need to go on a long ride. Just the one day or I looked at the weather forecast, here in San Diego it's always perfect, everybody thinks that, eh, it's mostly perfect in San Diego, uh, enough about San Diego. But I was looking at the weather forecast specifically for Yuma, Arizona. So Arizona obviously being the first state east of California, uh, Southern California that is, um, in the southernmost states. Um, what, what's the best thing you can do with a 50cc scooter that only tops out like 40, 45 miles an hour ride to another state? So I saw the weather forecast in Yuma and it's been about 95, 100 degrees, I'm like, eh, it's okay to ride in that temperature, but I saw Wednesday coming up, 90 degrees, or the, the high of 90 or 89, I said, oh, that's perfect riding weather. So, guess what? Decided I'm gonna just wake up and ride this thing 250 miles and tour the desert. Let me take you along on that ride and I'll show you all the fun stuff and I'll show you the route I'm gonna take the cover about 250 miles. I did cheat on one aspect on the scooter. I just rode one way, uh, had a truck available at a property I have out that way um, and loaded up and brought it back. But it was a blast of a 10 hours. I never thought I would have had a good enjoyable 10 hours with a 50cc scooter on a tour. And what's the scooter called? This is a touring edition Vespa 50 and that's what I want to put it put it to the test. So here we go. Here we go, 7 a.m. Off for a ride. All right, so we're about 15 miles east of San Diego. Started out as a nice dry day. Now it's getting a little wet and a little colder on this May 2020 morning. First destination, Julian. Up in the mountains, about 3,500 feet elevation gain. Uh, Google says one hour, I say two hours. All right, ridden the scooter, almost 50 miles, two bars of gas down, ETA 905, let's call that 10 a.m. for Julian. about 6.4 percent grade and we're going 22 miles an hour full throttle the peak up there is a good hike Lake Cuyamaca mm. 40 miles an hour so we're about two hours into the ride We've had temperatures of the high 40s, the low 50s. It's a little stormy here up in the mountains at nearly 4,600 feet. Ahead, us, ahead of us is the desert grade. 
and we'll be going down the Banner Banner Road onto Highway 78 onto the desert and it's much warmer down there so headed towards Julian first stop and then on to Brawley so here's Julian the quaint little town up in the mountains northeast of San Diego popular destination the Miner's Diner and Julian Apple Pies. So this is Banner Grade. It's a sharp, windy downhill, 11 miles from about 4,000 feet down to about 1,000 feet. So we'll drop about 3,000 feet in about 10, 11 miles. Oh dang, I'm gonna get held up by a truck? I've been the one doing all the getting past. Usually I'm the one passing. Well, I guess this is my first pass on my 50. 4,000 feet. One thing I love about the Freedom of Air and Sprint chassis is it sure handles so nice through the turns. So here we are at Cesar's Crossing, the first intersection in the desert grade. We can continue straight onto 78, which is pretty boring, but we're going to take the Great Southern Overland Stage Route, which is a nice windy desert road. And our first stop will be Acatillo, which is a small desert town at the base of the 8 Highway right when you come down the mountains uh, further south of here. So there we go, 100 miles on the clock of the scooter. Two bars left on the fuel, so I don't know, about a third of a tank left. 35 miles to Acatillo. And a little past 10. So it's 1040. The scooter's got 117 miles on it now. We filled up the tank when it's brand new. Uh, low fuel lights on, so typically with these Primavera and Sprint size fuel tanks, that's about a quarter of the tank remaining. So another 17 miles to Acatillo, I'll fill up there. So I thought I'd find a little spot to stop for a couple minutes and enjoy the desert landscape. No one ever said you need an adventure bike to go off-road. But you definitely don't want to be riding a scooter much further on this trail. It's pretty much a steep drop off. All right, back to the road. All right, there we go, first gas stop, Acatillo. So all gassed up, we're going east towards Yuma, headed to Brawley next. We're paralleling the 8 freeway, uh, just filled up the scooter with 1.75 gallons of gas. Um, did the calculation, 76 miles per gallon, do 135 miles on this scooter. I suspect the mileage would be better if I was riding it not full throttle the whole time. 
maybe the only way to hit the magic 100 miles per gallon mark would be to drive it at 30 miles per hour. So these windmills here, uh, the town of Acatillo didn't like them when they went in about 10 years ago, but they're absolutely massive. And into San Diego port, I would see the wings. They would have an oversized convoy just to transport one of the wings. And I go around this, you can kind of get out of here. Look at those bolts holding this thing to the ground. are absolutely massive and it's always windy out here in the desert flats especially at the base of the mountains over there in Ocotillo and eventually we're gonna have to hop on the dirt because I'm pretty certain this bridge up here has collapsed the potholes on this road are wicked it's so time for some sandy roads. Let's see how the between there does in the sand. Hmm. I don't know. These little small tires. All right, that's a little fishy. Yeah, it's moving, but it's a pretty sandy road. Not something I would want to do all day. I tell you that. It'd be nice if you just had a little more speed. I could tell you. When in doubt, throttle out. All right, there we go. Let's see if we can make it up there. No, it doesn't quite have enough on for this one. All right. I can either get some momentum or, ah, you know what? I'll just tackle the, the sandy road. I don't know, I just think I got a dirt bike here. I'll just like shoot up that hill. Yeah, should know better. Just a 50. There we go. Oh, looks like a good spot to stop right under the trestle here. Oh yeah, that sand is super. You can tell all the dune buggies have been through this. And I'm making it. Yeah. Once you get some momentum in the sander, that's how you go go about it. Wheelie the thing. Oh, there you go. We got a little wheelie out of it. There's old concrete here. Probably laid down in the 40s or 50s. It's the, probably the original highway right here. Highway 80. And there's plenty of sections that go that have been either covered up by the eight or they're in the mountains. And they're just, they look like a single lane concrete highway. And once you get to the sand dunes, there's a section called the plank highway, which was wooden planks. And that's how they did it back in the day. Uh, transversing the sand dunes was quite a difficult task. And obviously the road is long washed away right here, right through this trestle. And we'll get back up on the pretty dang rough highway and continue on to Brawley. Gosh, I can't, I just can't hold back. Every time I see a hill, right. Just gotta go up it and see what it's all about. I 
I'm like a kid. I just can't stop playing in the dirt. Just can't get away from it. Uh, this road's so rough, I, I almost feel like I need to be back on the dirt. And some sections of the dirt were smoother than this road. But we got relief right here. Oh, now the road's nice. To the right is the start of a massive solar electric um, generation station. And ahead of us here is a gypsum processing plant for recycling and manufacturing of drywall for buildings. It's an absolutely massive plant. There's roads within the plant and a railroad that goes right out here. And this is just out in the middle of the desert, just north of the 8 freeway. And ironically, I got a little bit of a loose mirror right here. From these rough roads and off-roading. I have to pick staff in the next moment. I'll go for a quarter pounder with cheese, just a sandwich. Okay. And a iced coffee caramel. Medium? Uh, medium, fine, yeah. And that's it. 881, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, pit stop for lunch and tighten the mirrors back up. And the distance is the Algodonas Boone System. So it has the Glamis Recreation Park for like off-road vehicles. The biggest dune system in America. Osborne Overlook. Looks like they might have it closed up. So I'm getting pretty close to Yuma. Uh, GPS is 67 miles. I could continue on on Highway 78, which is straight, and then make a ride at Ogilvy Road, which cuts you back to the 8. It's about 30, 35 miles, something like that. Or I could take a 10 mile, um, well, it probably saves 10 miles if I make a right right here on the dirt road, Ted Kiff Road. It just kind of diagonals straight over to Ogilvy, almost where the 8 is. Hmm. I can go 35 miles an hour on the street, or I can go 25 miles an hour on the dirt with 10 miles shorter. I think I'd, I'd probably uh, be faster on the dirt road, so that's what I'm going to do. It's a cool new sign. All right. I have a little story about this road here. Um, believe it or not, I've ridden a vintage Vespa like on this road. It's like, I don't know, like 15 miles long maybe. Dirt road that just cuts across the desert. To the south of me is all the, um, the dune range. And this road is usually pretty sandy like it is right here. Kind of fighting through the, the 50, staying on the throttle to try to power through it. Um, but back to the story. Years ago, I don't know, probably 10 years ago, my another Vespa buddy of mine, uh, Rich, we just had a wild idea like, oh, let's just ride out pretty much the same route. Um, we're real similar. I think we're mostly close to the eight hi Highway 8. And we just both rode vintage Vespas. I had a Rally 200, the white Rally 200. He had a P200. And we mostly stayed on the pavement, but did some pretty broken up roads. Got to the desert, um, whatever, hung out party with some friends out in the dunes. And then I took him back down this road, like 15 miles, and he's not a dirt bike guy. And I think he dropped his Vespa a whole bunch of times. And I was like 
younger and stupider and going really fast. I think sometimes I do about 50, 55 on my rally down this road. And it get it gets squirrely in the sand. I just like move my weight back and just like power through it. Um, and several times I lost them. And he said, ah, oh, he hit the sand and then crossed up the handlebars and it threw him down in the sand on this road because this road gets really silty and sandy. Actually, it's pretty nice right now. There's these uh, crosses are a little sandy, but, you know, um, and it's kind of easy and mellow going nice and slow, like 25 miles an hour on it. Um, after we finished this road and hit the Highway 78, he just like looked at me and said, do not ever take me down this road again. He was pretty pissed. So, I'll tell you one thing. The dirt's not for everybody. Here's our sand right here, a little sand dune. Almost getting stuck. There's old, good old Boardmanville. And somebody wrecked right into that clothes sign. Well, this is what happens when you get uh, the sand gets a little too soft. You gotta run with your bike. Run with it, run with it, get on it, get on the seat, hang it, hang in for the the road you're riding and you're you're back on the road. You gotta do what you gotta do when you only got four horsepower. You got miles of sand. Miles and miles and miles and miles. Where's the pavement? can't get any momentum on full throttle on this thing. And it's just like, come on, let's get up on top. And right when you get some speed, you cross it up. Hey, at least I'm moving. Better than walking. That's just full throttle, going two or five miles an hour. There we go. This is a little better. That's silt. You can at least get on top of it. Still pretty squirrely. Then you got the sand trap. Ah, nine more miles of this. Maybe this road's like 20 miles. At least we're past a lot of the soft stuff. Never assume though. Oh, the end is near. That was about 17 or 18 miles of dirt with a lot of sand. I think I'm done with the sand for today on a 50cc scooter. I'll save it for another time. Before we hit the road, we gotta take care of some business here. Empty out the sand in the shoes. All right, on the road. So let's see, we are 34 miles remaining to Yuma. ETA at 5.30, I guess, like 5.45 or 6, because we'll be on the pavement from here on. So we're heading south, back towards the A freeway. You can see we're completely surrounded almost with the sand dunes. This dune system is humongous. It actually goes right into Mexico. The border fence goes right through the dunes, you know, pretty much about five miles to south of me right now. Oh yeah, bicycle route to Yuma. We are headed to the center of the world. So over there, you got the chapel on the hill. We're getting very close to crossing the Arizona state line. And where do you think we're at? We are at the center of the world. www.centerofthe-world.us. Learn all about it. This is one of the many canals that eventually ends up in the Colorado River right before it goes into Mexico. All right, there's 
the Colorado River, and what trickle is left. And here we go, Yuma, Arizona. So in the mid to late 1800s, Yuma was a railroad town with a prison. That's what it was known for. There's the prison museum. It's quite an interesting museum to go through. I don't think it's open May 2020. The Ocean to Ocean Highway Bridge in Yuma, Arizona. Here's the mighty Colorado River Basin. You can just uh, imagine about 100 years ago, this thing was raging. Now it's down to just a trickle, all the way from the Rocky Mountains to where it goes into Mexico, about five miles south of here. And there we go. So made it to Yuma. 217 miles from my house, about 240 miles from San Diego. Uh, do a little bit more riding and we'll hit that 250 mark today on a 50. All right, second fill up. We're about a little under half tank, so pumps are so much nicer in Arizona. California nozzles are pain in the butt. So there you go, the next fuel fill up nearly pretty much 90 miles a gallon including that horrendous sand full throttle going five miles an hour sometimes 90 miles per gallon so pretty much the hills probably got me on the first fill up going over 5,000 uh, feet of elevation change let's see what's burning over there maybe a car Oh, there's a little brush fire. Oh yeah, burning the motor home. I found a uh, muffler pipe for my next scooter project. Looks like it came off a semi. And off to the right is the historic ghost town of Tumco. It's a gold mining town right up against these mountains here. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, my ass hurts. So I hope you liked that video. It's kind of reminiscent of my old Mexico videos with Steve. Uh, we did that, I think a six or seven part video series on our trips to pretty much San Diego to Mexico City on Vespa GTS 250s. And we built scooters for it. I had a great time on that trip. And fortunately I've done so many more tours down there and met so many cool people in Mexico. But now that we got this COVID thing, I can just do like little voyages by myself. I hope to do more of these, maybe on a larger Vespa next round. Um, the desert's got so much weirdness to offer and so much cool stuff to offer. It's like unbelievable. People in San Diego, sometimes they don't even go over that hill and don't even realize there's a whole nother um, climate and county on the other side of those mountains. Just go over some statistics real quick with the scooter. Uh, the elevation gain that I did, I looked at a GPS, I think I did a total of like 7,000 feet of elevation gain on a scooter of a 50cc scooter. Uh, the first gas stop, it was like pretty much almost 80 miles a gallon. It's pretty remarkable that I went over um, a mountain range. I was like, I think my highest elevation and pretty much zero elevation in San Diego and went over nearly 5,000 feet and then back down to almost zero and gassed up the scooter. 
and got pretty much 80 miles a gallon. And all I did is held the thing pinned the whole time. Uh, second tank even was more remarkable. I was going through soft sand, off-roading this thing. Not what you, the average rider would ever take a Vespa. I don't really read the comments. Maybe I'll read the comments on this one. Let me know what you think about videos like this. I love doing videos like this. I wish I had more time to make more of them. They take more time to make and set up the GoPro and kind of edit a bunch of clips together. Um, and obviously support our dealership that helps support me and all the wonderful staff here at Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West. Everybody here is so dedicated to scooters. That's all we do is Vespas. Uh, we all have motorcycles and other cool vehicles, but um, the passion here is all about Vespas and scooters in general. This is Robot from Vespa Motorsport. Until next time, check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to your channel, hit the bell, because I'm doing videos pretty much every week as I can, sometimes a couple times a week, but only every once in a while I get to do a special video like this. Ride safe.